Welcome everybody to our next uh, webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. My name Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski, but you know you can just take my first name. Whenever you write me an email, if you address me directly here in the webinar chat, no problem. Take my first name, that's uh, fair enough. And uh, especially we have the English one, it's even easier uh, to have my first name here. Yeah, today is the 24th of uh, August 2017. That's just for the records here. So, you know, um, we do recordings of those webinars and you can always find um, the recordings of uh, this kind of webinars on the YouTube channel of uh, JFD. How to find it? Simply go to Google, press YouTube JFD, and um, then you are directly linked to the YouTube channel of JFD. You can find those webinars as well as uh, those from my colleagues. Very interesting stuff, uh, I can tell you. So have a look to that uh, YouTube channel always, and uh, you know where and how to register for next upcoming webinars. Yeah, today's topic, um, self-adapting trading strategies. But, if, but before I start, I just want to welcome you once again in the name of JFD. It's always a pleasure to have you within those uh, webinars. So self-adapting trading strategies. That sounds curious. I think um, nobody knows exactly what I mean here uh, with that kind of tit uh, title, but it's a little bit um, already self-explaining. What we are looking for here is that we try to develop first strategies and secondly that we have a strategy which adapts to the current market situation. If I would make the statement hey market changes from time to time um, I think everybody would agree and um, you would say yeah I know um, that's um, fair enough. Uh, market changes, um, of course. So why not the trading strategies? And finally, what we do here is we first develop a strategy and we you will see that we have uh, the way we do it. We have some additional advantages, but the way we do it, we can exactly use twice because that kind of trading development is already self-adapting to the market situation. And uh, that's a clue. And um, I will introduce two methodologies uh, today in order to get that up and running. You know, whenever you would try to get in touch with me direct, no problem. Just, just use my email address s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. And um, yeah, we can exchange information if you have additional questions. Um, no problem, just um, send me an email. Okay, so before we finally start, you know I have always to do two remarks. One is you can find already the slides in the GoToWebinar control panel. You can download uh, those um, uh, slides simply by pressing the appropriate button. Um, and the other, um, I have always uh, to make that kind of remark, the so-called risk disclaimer that, you know, hey, we uh, talk here about trading, trading strategies. But finally, when it comes to trading, you do it always on your own. And uh, But I think that's uh, self-explaining and uh, you know exactly what I mean. So, but that's mentioned. So let's simply get started. Um, what are the real topics of today? First, things I uh, want to go further with the breakout strategies we have had in our last webinars uh, two weeks ago. I do a short recap of that uh, webinar that Always, uh, that everybody is uh, up to speed uh, exactly with that kind of topic, because later that will be the example for having a self-adapting trading strategies and for the methodology I introduced here today. So that will be a short recap. Uh, so don't worry, uh, it's only a couple of minutes that uh, we have uh, one or two slides um, from the last webinar. 
uh, about breakout strategies. Then next topic is that we do what I call, and I don't know a better name for that, um, that is the so-called neighborhood analysis. And I do exactly that kind of methodology in order to avoid over-optimization. You may have heard about um, over-optimization or curve fitting or whatever name you give it, um, that is, has something uh, to do with uh, optimization in general. So we may find specific solutions for best equities. And I always do a quite uh, self-explaining example like, hey, you have a trading strategy with an EMA and you find out you get the best equity with 148 being the EMA period. What do you think if that strategy would break down, would be a ruin if you change that EMA value from 158 to 159? You would immediately say, I don't trade it. And that's exactly right. And that is meant with neighborhood analysis in the parameter space, because what we are looking for is that we investigate how the strategy develops if we change slightly our um, descriptive parameters for that strategy. And in case the strategy breaks down by varying those parameters, then we don't trade exactly those set of parameters. And that is meant with neighborhood analysis. And I will um, give you some examples for that because it's a mighty tool and it's extremely helpful uh, in order to get stable strategies. Then it comes to the next methodology. So <laughs> you see today is a methodology workshop here. And that methodology is called walk forward uh, method. And that has to do with how to, to derive good parameters, how to apply those parameters. And in order to, to get you up and running with that methodology, I will do um, a comparison to another one, which is uh, for at least a few of you maybe more well known. That is a so-called out of sample test. And then you finally will understand what I will mean with walk forward methodology. And that methodology will help us for the two issues. One, to get a better feeling about our strategy in the history and to have finally that kind of strategy being self-adapted to market conditions, market changes. And um, that really comes out of the methodology itself that we get it self-adapting to changes within the markets. Okay, let's get um, direct into the neighborhood analysis um, of parameters in the trading strategies. Let's get first to a specific starting point to discuss it a little bit better. So we know if we talk about trading strategies that our trading strategies in general or um, in most cases have different parameters, uh, what we call degrees of freedom. And an example for those kind of parameters might be times like uh, open range breakout times and so on. Oh, by the way, I would uh, like to recap uh, open range breakout times so that you really get uh, started here. Sorry, um, I, I, I mentioned it, but uh, I didn't uh, realize that I still have to do it. No problem. Uh, thanks for the remark here. Um, so it's really simple. So. Um, an open range breakout strategy normally starts with two vertical lines or with two points uh, in time during the day. In this case, I have a vertical line at zero, um, zero o'clock or midnight, and then another vertical line at eight o'clock. And what I do is, uh, after drawing those two vertical lines here, uh, I wait until eight o'clock. So we have now eight o'clock in the morning and uh, then I can draw two additional lines, two horizontal lines. One would be here, which is now uh, in red here. That would be the highest point within that price range during my two time frames here. And then I draw another horizontal line and 
exactly at the minimum. Um, so the low end of that price range, which is finally that last candle here and the minimum is indeed here where my main cursor is right now. Yeah, and then we have a range and that range is now well described. We have an upper limit and a lower limit of that range and we can do it exactly at eight o'clock when we know uh, the maximum and the minimum within the time range. What we now do is we place two orders, one buy stop order at the upper limit and one sell stop order at the lower limit here um, at, at uh, that um, point here. So we have now two pending orders, um, both stop orders, buy stop and sell stop. And now we simply wait. In case one of those two orders is triggered, then we cancel the other one, which means we have um, an order situation which is called OCO, one cancels the other. So when the short order is triggered, um, let's assume it has been here with that candle, uh, we delete we, um, the buy stop order and now we are short in the market, expecting that if a breakout occurs, that that breakout will follow exactly in that direction. So here in my example, of course, to the south. Now we have um, at least to think about, hey, what about stop loss and take profit? Okay, let's first start with stop loss. Stop loss is easy. We always place our orders in a way that our stop loss is exactly on the opposite side, meaning our original sell stop order, which has placed on that horizontal line, the stop loss for that order has been the red line here, so the upper limit. And originally the buy stop order here has a stop loss exactly at the lower limit. So um, the stop loss itself is not a degree of freedom because it, um, it's well described within the, uh, the logic of the strategy itself. So therefore, we don't have to think further about the stop loss. Stop loss is given, but take profit. Yeah, take profit is a degree of freedom. And in my case, I simply use a risk reward ratio of one. And um, that risk reward ratio of one exactly leads to a take profit here to that green line here on the lower end. So that is a degree of freedom because, of course, I could do, go for a risk reward ratio of two. So the, the green line would move uh, further down uh, the road here or even three or whatever number you take. So in my case, uh, after a couple of hours, my tech profit has been uh, reached uh, about one o'clock and uh, perfect trade. But as always, uh, that is just a description of the strategy. You know that it will not always be that smooth. Uh, not all trades are winner trades, of course not. But in the majority, we can, um, we will have an edge by applying that kind of strategy. But the question is, what times should I use? This has just been an example, like midnight to eight o'clock. What about one o'clock to nine o'clock or maybe six o'clock to 10 o'clock? Or what about um, other risk reward ratios? So that are the degrees of freedom. We don't know exactly um, when we start, but we can check for best equities by varying uh, all combinations of those parameters. Up to now, we have three degrees of freedom, three parameters, starting time, end time of the range, and finally, the take profit multiplier, or better to say, risk reward ratio. There might be other uh, degrees of freedom additionally, or call it options uh, for further improvement. And um, my, maybe you use an EMA as a trend filter, so you only place the order in one specific direction in, for example, in uh, the main direction um, of that price, uh, of that underlying, or you might use other uh, filters as well. And what I mentioned here 
um, directly because that is the one I will use later. That is a minimum wage size. I introduced that uh, two weeks ago that we may think, hey, if that range is too small, then it might not be good to uh, trade at all because just um, um, some wiggling around, some noise in the prices would hit already our stop loss if that range is too small. So maybe that is a good thing uh, to take into account as well. Um, and that would be a minimum range size. And that is what I will use uh, later. So that's just for the introduction um, of uh, open range breakout strategies. So, you know, um, we need the times, starting time, end time, take profit multiplier, and finally that uh, minimum range size, for example. But now, Let's jump back into the neighborhood analysis, which I started here a little bit already. So starting point is exactly what we discussed uh, in the last couple of minutes, that we have um, that we have a couple of degrees of freedom here. Um, and those might be uh, those times, like starting time, end time of our range, or you may for other strategies, you may have a stop loss value, maybe in percent or maybe as a multiple of ATR, whatever. Then you have um, parameters like risk reward ratios of your trade, or in our case here, the take profit multiplier of the range, or like EMA periods, you name it. So we have a couple of degrees of freedom. And what we typically do um, when we try to develop trading strategy that we try to find the best set of parameters um, for the best equity. And you know, best equity is sometimes a little bit misleading um, because it's not directly um, known what we call best equity. It's normally not just highest profit because we have to take into account drawdowns, uh, linearity of our equity curve as, uh, as well. And that has been part of previous webinar as well. And you know, I introduced there a parameter which I call opti and that uh, should be minimized in that case because that includes all like maximum drawdown, slope of equity and the linearity of the equity itself. But the question is now, how to avoid over optimization or what is named curve fitting as well. So, you know, remember my example about EMA? Exactly that we try to avoid. And in general, the approach is that we look into our parameter space and look for our neighborhoods within that parameter space. And what we think is that a strategy can only be good is if a variation of those parameters do not ruin our equity. I think that is intuitively clear what I mean here. Um, and I think you would uh, sign in into that kind of statement. But let's go a little bit more practical in order to really see what I mean when I talk about uh, neighborhood in parameter space. What I have done here within that Excel sheet is just something to illustrate the methodology. And in this case, I only have one degree of freedom. And in this case, I um, have um, uh, used a stop loss value, stop loss in percent. Think about a trade in DAX or whatever. So and that is a parameter for that kind of strategy. And in order to make it extremely simple, I don't use here um, the so-called opti. I just look for the profit. And you see a couple of numbers here. Um, so think about uh, behind every number is a complete equity curve. But finally, the profit has been like for 0.1% stop loss, minus 1,000 euro. Okay, 0.2%. Minus 950 and so on and so forth. And what I have done here now is simply I plotted my profit against my descriptive parameter of that strategy, namely the stop loss value in percent. And I get exactly that graph. 
So we can immediately um, figure out the best stop loss value um, for the best um, profit. And it would be exactly that point here. So it would be 0.8% would be uh, the stop loss value with the best equity. Question mark. You see already directly what I mean. That might be over optimization. That is the highest value. Uh, mathematically, that's absolutely correct. But you see already in what region of stop loss values we should uh, we we should use better for our strategy. And now it would be some uh, around here. And that might be another name for neighborhood analysis. What we are looking for is we look for plateaus within our parameter space um, when we look for, uh, for example, in this case, for the profit. So around here would be much better than going for the best at all. Because a variation here does not ruin our strategy. You see what happens here? If we just go a little bit to the right or to the left, immediately our equity, our profit drops down dramatically. So, and that is already an indication that this would be over um, the curve fitting. In order to do that step mathematically, it's simply doing something like this. We go for one neighbor. And what I do here is really exactly what I do uh, during strategy development. I take the average of those three numbers and uh, assign that average once again to that 0.2% stop loss value. Doing this and now going down here, adding two zeros because then it's easier to plot this uh, quite fast. And now I can plot this graph once again, profitability versus our descriptive parameter, um, in this case, stop loss value. And you see immediately what happens. Our originally highest point at 0.8% stop loss value is already not anymore the highest value. Now you see even better than that region would be more suitable to be traded. And it becomes even more clear if we do that kind of step once again um, with two neighbors. And um, the logic is exactly the same as before. Now we go for two to the right and two to the left. And then we have finally the average of five numbers and we can once again take that add some zeros at the borders and now we can plot it once again and then we have the situation with two neighbors and the picture becomes even more clear now um, that we definitely should not use the value 0.8 for our strategy for being the best stop loss value. No, it's something different. It would be exactly here, this, that value, and we would go for 1.8. And you see, that's the way neighborhood analysis is being done. In this case, it can be done visually as well because I can simply plot with one parameter. I can plot it as a two-dimensional graph here. If I would have two descriptive parameters of my strategy, for example, stop loss and uh, risk reward ratio, I could plot it once again and it would be a three-dimensional plot and uh, still it, everything would be visible. You see my problem? Next step, at, in a three-dimensional parameter space, I cannot plot it anymore uh, in order to visualize that. But the methodology of looking for the neighbors is still valid and is still absolutely the same. But now it's in a three or four dimensional space. So it's um, straightforward.
Uh, it sounds crazy, but um, mathematically, it's exactly the same than doing that kind of job here uh, in one dimension. Uh, just going for the left and the right. Think about we would go up and down, left and right, and now, now three-dimensional even up and down in the next dimension and so on and so forth. But that's the way we can investigate our neighborhood and we can avoid over-optimization because we look for those plateaus. Those plateaus are the regions of our interest. Here, the strategy is stable against variation of parameters. And that is something which is intuitively a good thing for trading strategies. Remember always my example, EMA 158, EMA 159, and strategy breaks down. I would not go for 158. Let's look for other situations within our parameter space. We will find better points with more neighbors which are still stable and we will exactly find those plateaus. So that's neighborhood analysis, which is an important methodology to avoid overfitting. But now let's go for the next step. Because I mentioned I want to introduce today two methodologies. So that was a point about neighborhood analysis, which shows us how to avoid curve fitting. And that's the way how we identify the best set of parameters in the context of neighbors and in the context of not really looking for the uh, highest profit, but uh, looking for the best value of opti. So, but that's not all. We still want to go for self-adapting trading strategies. We are not done already. But let me try to explain that methodology by another methodology. It sounds crazy to explain one thing which is maybe unknown with another thing which is maybe unknown as well, but it helps. So a um, similar method is the so-called out of sample test. You may have heard about that as well. Let's go for an example of a completely different subject, um, but it's especially in our days um, yeah, something of uh, real interest. Um, the police likes it and uh, security intelligence, um, yeah, they like it as well. So think about we have 1,000 pictures of persons and we know to each of those pictures the name of that specific person. So there may, might be 10 pictures from Stefan, 20 pictures from um, Juan, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So, But to all the pictures, we know the person. And that is now our learning set completely. But what we try is we, we, we have an algorithm and we want to check that algorithm whether that is suitable, whether that is good or not. How to do that? It's quite simple. So we divide our complete set of pictures, the 1000s, in two stacks. We take randomly 700 pictures and with those 700 pictures, we feed our algorithm in order to be trained that that algorithm learns how to identify the name to a certain picture so those 700 pictures would be our learning set and then we take the same algorithm but now we take the other 300 pictures left and we let the algorithm identify who is on the picture since we know it, we can check the quality of that algorithm simply by hit rate. Hit rate, hmm, it's already close to trading. Um, so we are back in the race again, back to our subject. But that is the way how you can um, check your algorithms by that out of sample test. You train with some data and you apply to other data and then you look whether that has been a good algorithm, yes or no. In principle, it sounds quite familiar to what we do with tr uh, trading. 
but there's a but. We don't have pictures. You may think about patterns. Yes, that's correct. But we don't have um, yeah, random pictures or just the selection of uh, patterns. No, what we have uh, within our stock prices or currency uh, prices is a so-called time series. So there's an order. <laughs> uh, there's an order within all those candles. And that order is simply the time. So one candle follows the other, and every candle has a timestamp. So it's a sorted uh, pattern already in itself, and that's simply called the time series. And for time series, that out of sample test is not the best what you can do, because later when we think about market changes, why to go for a test sample out of 2001 and thinking that whatever we learned about that might be useful in 2017 as well, or still. So mm, we should still look that we have a time series. So don't go too far in the history, too far in the past. And here the method of choice is the so-called walk forward methodology. And how that looks is uh, best presented within that picture. Now we are back to stock prices, or in this case, currency prices uh, as well. Uh, and what you see here is a very long period in total. Uh, that period covers uh, seven years. And originally, it's a weekly chart. Uh, still, I want to talk about my open range breakout uh, strategy, but it's only in order to introduce the methodology. So we don't will have real trades within the chart, no horizontal lines uh, like in the previous one. But now it goes for how to establish um, a simple method. And you see already, I have here some boxes. And let's go to the starting point here. What we do now is we go for that green box. That is our training box. Think about um, that green box covers about one year of price data. Finally, um, it would be H1 data so that we can define that open range breakout strategy as uh, in the previous chart. And now, we will find by an algorithm the best parameter set for starting time of the range, end time of the range, risk reward ratio, and minimum um, minimum range size. So we by brute force analysis we will find the best parameter set. In the context of neighborhood analysis, and then we have a fixed set. We know that is the best equity we can get within the green box with that specific set of parameters. But now the new point comes. That set of parameters is now applied in the future. And if I now talk about future, I can do that because after the green box, we have prices as well. Those prices, those candles have not been part of our optimization process. But we can now apply our set of parameters, our um, uh, starting uh, time, end time, and so on and so forth. And we can apply those parameters, let's say, for the next couple of days. And that would be the red box. And then we get trades in the future. And then we will build up a list with those trades. Those trades should be our final, let's call it back testing um, equity. But it's not a real back test because from the point of optimization, it's the future. And you see already, hey, that's exactly what we want to do later, meaning today. Tomorrow we want to trade our trading strategy and we know what has happened in the past, but we do that step iteratively. Let's start. So 
optimization within the green box, then applying parameters in the red box, and we uh, write down all those traits within the red box. What is the next step? Quite easy. We move the green box exactly to the end of the previous red box, and it would look like this one here. And now everything, everything starts from the very beginning once again. So that means, yo, um, we have a green box, we optimize, we get a new, maybe the same, set of parameters for starting, start time of the range, end time of the range, and so on. And then we apply once again in the future, because still those candles, those prices in the red box are the future from the point of view of optimization. And then we check the trades in, within the red box once again and write them down and so on and so forth. Finally, we get a list of trades which always have been in the future from the point of view of optimization. And now we are, let's say, at today. And the good thing is, now we do the same. And what does it mean we do the same? We optimize within the green box and we apply tomorrow for real trading. You see the clue? It's already two clues. One is what we have done thousand times in the past optimization applying in the future is exactly what we do from tomorrow onwards in our real trading activities. But it's not like, hey, we have developed a trading strategy, looking back to 10 years history, finding good parameters and hope that they work tomorrow still. No, it's a different kind of quality. Even with that, that methodology is no, not the holy grail. But we have done that step of optimization and applying in the then future already hundreds of time. And therefore, it has another quality, another, um, it's, it's more, more stable what we do here um, instead of just doing a back test and then hope that tomorrow strategy still will work. So we have done that experiment already hundreds of time in the past. And that's quite good to have that experience. Is it the holy grail? Once again, answer no. And it's even if I will uh, show you later some equity out of that methodology, uh, you will see uh, it's not, um, it's even, they look worse than just optimized equities in um, backtesting. But that's okay because it's always applying the strategy in the then coming future. And that has not been part of the optimization. And that is better um, than just going from tomorrow with a new strategy. Um, so that's the one point. But there's another point. I mentioned already the parameters might change and they will change. And that is nothing else than a self-adapting strategy. The market conditions might change during uh, we, we move our, our green box uh, through our data and um, the market uh, will change maybe once again and uh, you, we, we get new prices here and we do it iteratively once again, uh, the same step. Yeah, but that means our trading strategy, in our case here, the open range breakout strategy, adapts to the new situation. Whatever that new situation may mean, and I don't have a real definition of market change, um, but anyhow, that strategy is automatically self-adapting to changes within the market, and that's good. So that's a cool methodology, and the combination of that neighborhood analysis introduced first, and now that walk forward methodology is a powerful tool for trading strategies at all. But now there might be some questions, but before I go to that, let me repeat the advantages of that methodology. Since we don't use 
for the trading and optimization the same set of data it's it has a totally other quality of what we are doing here it's much more close to what we intend to do from tomorrow onwards namely optimization and applying a strategy to tomorrow and we have done that step already thousands of times in the history so we know what we are doing we know exactly how it reacts in the past and that is something very good let's look a little bit from the mathematical perspective on what i've introduced here that would mean that we have done a so-called reduction of number of degrees of freedom a complicated sentence no originally our strategy has four degrees of freedom but doing it in this way means those degrees of freedom are not really degrees of freedom anymore automatically we do that optimization within the green box we have rules um, about neighborhood analysis and so on and so forth so it's well determined what comes out so we get automatically our four parameters but still there is one degree of freedom and we have not talked about that and that is the length the time length of that what i call back mirror the length of that green box should it be one year two years three years one month i don't know from the very beginning how do i deal with that question simply by neighborhood analysis so i go for all um, and then look for a plateau exactly in the way we did within that excel sheet and look for a good length of back mirror good length of that green box which gives us stable results for the overall equity which is still always um the sequence of trades in the future in the future from the point of view of optimization so we have a reduction of degrees of freedom from originally four now to one and that is the length of that green box that uh, back mirror length so i would like i would love to get rid of that final degree of freedom as well but i don't have a methodology for that so i live with that um, but it's finally only one degree of freedom there are disadvantages of that methodology it's the the computer time consumption of that is quite huge so you have to do a lot of calculations but thinking about today with computers we have with servers you can rent it's a problem you can solve and um, you know or you can imagine what the real big boys are doing um, and they have even more computers more algorithms more coders um, but something like that we can do as well in our uh, for our own the other disadvantage you may say it's a disadvantage but i don't think so um, those parameters have to be recalculated in the real future as well yeah so you know market changes but our parameters will change as well automatically since we do that recalculation in the same way we have done it for the last maybe 15 years so it's not a new story it's the same story uh, and we do exactly the same but finally i want to show you two examples um and it will be three uh, in total but anyhow so we will look to the performance of an open range breakout strategy which runs on eight underlyings um six forex six times forex then um, gold and um, oil so that is the way i do, um, we have realized that kind of strategy let's look to the performance of that strategy um in two ways one in the live performance of uh, a few months and then that back testing performance but now back testing is not so right wording anymore because it's has the, the trades or the, the equity you see there is already the future trades always but you see that 
So don't be irritated if that uh, does not look like a straight line anymore. And then to the other question, hey, what about those parameters? How do they change? How uh, often do they change if you do exactly that kind of methodology? It's an interesting question as well. Um, and um, so we have um, to look into that as well. So, but first let's go for um, a trading strategy, um, which is uh, now shown here. And uh, what you see here is the equity of those eight traded underlyings being a combined equity, all the trades of the different underlyings. Um, so it uh, will be, for example, here you see Euro, British Pound, uh, US Dollar, Japanese Yen, and so on. Uh, so a couple of underlyings. And finally, during the last 10 years, that is the equity. But it's a different quality of equity. It's not the the equity here, um, you may think, hey, that doesn't look that amazing good. But remember, it's always the trades in the future. So it's not an optimized backtest result um, like a lot of people are uh, showing to, um, around. No, it's that walk forward backtesting. And the trades which are listed here, are the trades in the future always. And then story as always, we have drawdowns, we have flat areas within the, such an equity, but still it's a good equity. We have always to keep in mind how it really looks and we know that we may, might have drawdowns of a year. And honestly, actually with that uh, trading strategy, I am indeed in a drawdown phase. Um, since you know I'm always uh, open to everything I show here, um, so um, that strategy runs now for four months and has a minus of about 240 euros. It's not huge, but it's a minus, but it's okay. I know even drawdowns of four months is. Um, is okay for, for trading strategies. And by the way, the strategy has been already in the plus as well. So um, so there was uh, about 150 euro plus um, in the meantime, but now it's a drawdown phase. But you see still here, um, just to be uh, concrete, um, we have open trades for today. Uh, we have a long trade on Australian dollar, Japanese yen, which is currently in plus and we have a short trade on um, Brent uh, which is currently um, um, a winning trade but let's wait you know those trades are closed before swap costs occur so the, those trades are no not uh, overnight trades they will be closed um, already at 10 German time um, and then next uh, day starts with new trades. And you see, if you look um, exactly within uh, the charts here, that especially today, there have been a couple of underlyings being in the, uh, that the minimum range has not been hit. So um, the range was too small to trade and therefore there has um, not been any trade, for example, for Euro British pound. Complete different times. Um, you see, eight o'clock, twelve o'clock, two o'clock. Um, a lot of different time frames. So, therefore, let's have a look to those parameters directly. But it's a perfect strategy, I can tell you. Um, and parameters, yeah, parameters and how they change. Let's uh, have a look, for example, to Euro, Japanese yen, and now. Don't be crazy about those charts. Uh, I will introduce you and then you will understand everything here. We are looking here for about 12 years uh, of uh, history. And in the first graph, what you see here um, are two lines. It's um, the, the start time of the range and the end time of the range. And now you might think, wow, that are curious. Uh, um, 
not directly times here. Yeah, you are right. Uh, it's uh, minutes after midnight. So a 600, uh, 600 divided by 60 is 10. So 600 is 10 o'clock. It uh, has to do with uh, C coding. And then you would not like um, times in the writing way we do it normally. Therefore, uh, a single number uh, is uh, much easier to handle. So 600 is 10 o'clock. And now you see during the last 12 years, how those times, start time of the range and end time of the range, have changed. And since we are looking to 12 years, the conclusion is they don't change that often. Uh, it's 12 years. And you see there are periods of maybe just uh, nearly two years where we don't have um, more or less no parameter change. Uh, and even if we have a change, it's uh, just one hour. You see bigger jumps as well. Um, but in total, the changes are not that often. And you see another example here uh, that is a minimum range. Um, same applies for that. Uh, maybe it's um, just moving around between two values uh, like here. But the changes are not that often. Risk reward ratio, mm, a little bit more changes, um, but having in mind this is 12 years, it's uh, not that crazy. But there are changes, and that is what I mean with market change. A, a market might change, and our strategy changes automatically with those changed market conditions. Let's have another example um, and uh, that I only show um, that is now Euro Australian dollar uh, that you see for such an underlying which has the Australian dollar involved, you get other times. And um, there has been a long part of um, history where we have uh, our start and end time of our range very early in the morning as we have today very early in the morning which is i think well, you can understand it because australian dollar means hey, they are far before us um, japanese yen you may say hey they are before us as well but japanese yen is much more traded during the day still Australian dollar is um, a currency of the night and that we have range times within that night already uh, is not surprisingly. In total, the changes are even less often than um, for Euro, Japanese yen, but you see from time to time they change as well. You might remember I mentioned I want to show a third example here. And that has to do with the um, webinar we have had a couple of weeks ago about uh, Martin Gale type strategies. And if you go back to that webinar and the recordings of that webinar, I have already mentioned that the equities I showed there have been walk forward equities as well. So same kind of methodology. And now since a few weeks are um, done. I can show you some results of that uh, strategy. And um, yeah, you see, that is the equity. So trading about 12 different Forex pairs um, in that Martingale-like uh, strategy. Um, Self-adapting parameters change exactly in the way uh, we discussed today. I know it's only one month's history about, but that looks promising, I can tell you. So that's um, a huge step forward and exactly with that methodology and with that type of uh, strategy as well. So I know I only show an equity here and still it's a demo account uh, because uh, expert advisors are on test uh, phase. Um, but it looks promising and it proves already a little bit for me hey the concept of self-adapting that walk forward methodology is a cool concept and i should stick to that concept um, of course so 
Um, let me summarize what we have uh, introduced today. So where we are, let me just uh, go to my last slide here. So we talked today about self-adapting trading strategies, which is inherently something good. So that we don't have a strategy which is um, which sticks to its origin, just having a set of parameters and then do whatever uh, for the next 10 years. No, we have now a methodology which adapts to, let's say, the last two years and looks for the results and tries to to track down the new new rules. And that is what is done with that methodology of walk forward um, which I described today. We use within that methodology the neighborhood analysis in order to avoid over-optimization in general, which is a cool method as well, uh, even without walk forward, in just to avoid over-optimization by looking uh, to the neighbors within the parameter space and um, that gives more stable uh, situations. And finally, if you apply that walk forward methodology, you have what I call a better feeling um, and a better confident of what you are doing tomorrow. Because out of that methodology, what you have done there hundreds of time, namely optimization, and then apply those results to the future, you have done it hundreds of times. And that is exactly what we do when we trade tomorrow. But we have done this step. And that is a cool thing. So it's a cool concept. And I hope you enjoyed um, being part of uh, that story here today. That you have two new tools within your toolbox. One neighborhood analysis, the other one uh, walk forward methodology in order to get good trading results. And uh, as you have seen, um, I showed one example which is in the minus right now and one example which is extremely good in the plus um, right now. It's not so ho holy grail, but it helps to get more stable situations and a little bit more predictable. But is there a guarantee that it works tomorrow? Of course, simple answer, no. Um, there's, there are no guarantees within trading. Um, and that's something we, we have to encounter always uh, when we go for trading. So that's for today. Uh, there will be new webinars um, next month. They will be announced shortly. Uh, you know where and how to register to those. And have a um, um, look to, to the YouTube channel, channel of JFD in general. There are my colleagues with other webinars, other topics, very good um, explained. I know that. So I can only recommend to have a look there. They, a couple of them are in English as well, uh, especially Jens is doing um, a lot of English webinars uh, during the day uh, already. So that's um, quite a cool thing. So maybe you visit uh, Jens uh, with his webinars in the future. Okay, that's for today. Very nice to have you within that webinar webinars and see you again in a couple of days. Have a good time. Bye-bye.